I wonder if it's going to be dangerous to discover Lesotho on a horse's back. It's a pretty big adventure just to get here. 12 hours from London to Johannesburg and then a short internal flight to Mazeru, Lesotho's capital. It's then an hour road trip to the Malele Lodge, the starting point for my expedition into the roadless wilderness of Lesotho. The lodge has been running tours, treks and hikes around these parts for over 20 years, but I'm still less than confident about my credentials as an adventurer. Perhaps through your television set, you're receiving the unmistakable scent of adventure at this point, although it could be the inevitable perfume of fear. Might just be the horses, though. Before four-wheel drive, there was only four-hoof drive if you wanted to avoid a punishing walk in these parts. And the Basutu ponies are the thoroughbred Land Rovers of Lesotho. They're the best way to get into and over the magnificent Maluti Mountains. My Little Pony can make the crucial difference between an enjoyable time trotting through a landscape that looks like a painting and a lonely death of starvation in the wilderness. First, though, it's important to quickly establish a meaningful and lasting bond of mutual trust and respect between you and your mount. I'm not what you would call an experienced rider. Earlier, somebody told me that in a couple of hours, my uh, gluteus maximus would have the consistency of biltong, which is meat that's dried in the sun for several weeks. Though my booty might become like a salami, I'm beginning to feel like I'm the star of my own western. Only another eight hours to go. Two minutes in the saddle, and I reckon I look like John Wayne at a pony club gymkhana. So as we trot into the unknown on a two-day, 20-pound trek into a land called Adventure, I'm already looking forward to a comfortable night at a custom-built lodge in a friendly Basutu village. This kind of confidence begets patience. Are we nearly there? Are we nearly there? Lesotho is not the kind of place that has very strict schedules, but any way we look at it, we've got a long way to go on some very bumpy roads. The Basutu men are incredibly and effortlessly stylish, and beneath my health and safety helmet, I envy them their cool straw hats. At last, though, I'm getting used to the combination of physical pain and natural beauty. Speed it up. What happens next is a complete surprise, one of those once-in-a-lifetime moments. <laughs> Something rather wonderful and special is happening. Hello, gentlemen. Dumela <laughs> Mbundati. Dumela Bondate. <laughs> Everyone's very friendly and we're invited to watch this mysterious spectacle. What did he say to me? <laughs> he said, we're very fine. Ah, we don't good. know how we are Me you. too. Good, thank Kepela, you. Kepela Handle. Kepela Handle. It's obviously a privilege to be watching what we're watching. But what are we watching? <laughs> I asked my guides, Zach and Bakani, to explain. So boys and girls of around 18 years were forced to go to initiation school so as to become the men and women. Of the initiation country. school? Yeah. What is that? The circumcision school. Circumcision school? Yeah, it, we call it initiation school. Right. These adolescent boys have spent around three months up at a school in the mountains learning about the life that lies before them. And while they're up there, they're circumcised. So they've all come back from the rite of passage that takes them from boy to man. Is that right? Yes. I see. This ceremony is held as a welcome home for their return. I think about asking, as I'm about to go into the mountains, if they've got any tips for me. Right. Adventure beckons. <laughs> and it's not an adventure without mystery, without encountering the unexpected, without being nudged or even thrown out of your comfort zone. Which reminds me, my poor bottom has yet to find its comfort zone. Still, it's a little bit easier to go down, or it seems that way until I realise we're riding down a cliff into a ravine. <laughs> 
and what's more dangerous than riding down a cliff into a ravine. How are we going to get across here? Get on. Get on the horse? Yes. And then what, just through the water? And the horse is going to swim. It's going to swim, and I'm going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it cross. Come on. This is something I've never done before. It's funny, you know, the, the closest point of reference for a lot of the things that we've done so far on this trip, this adventure, is, uh, is westerns. Okay, there. Ow! <laughs>